Hello, you awesome friends. This is your pal, Edward Deer, speaking of one of my wonderful friends, Sam Connolly. How are you doing today, Sam? Uh, I'm doing really well, thanks, Ed. How about yourself? Look, it's just great to be here. Uh, you're in beautiful Piedmont in Sydney. I'm with the Opera House and the... Uh, the, uh, the Opera House and the Bridge, I thought I'm going back to front. And I was going to say um, to our viewers around the world, Sam's a wonderful friend of mine uh, on and off camera, and she is a high-end coder, gamer, amazing person and tech influencer, and she's also big in the meetup space. And Sam, I just, I'm so honoured to have you with us on our show. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love being here. This is actually a, a gaming headset as well that I've uh, commandeered for the interview. Is that the Logitech one? Because I've got that a Logitech one at home. Uh, no, this one's just the generic, I think, A10 that you can get from JB Hi-Fi. There we go. Product placement right there. Oh, it's very good. Now, Sam, I know you're a very busy uh, busy lady. I just want to ask you, can you tell us very quickly um, what, what you do and how you add value to people's lives? Mm -hmm. uh, for most of my tech career, I've been a software tester and uh, software testing is a little bit soft and nebulous. It's not as hard as or hardcore as coding, uh, but we're trying to identify issues and bugs uh, in products before they get to customers. So have you ever used some software and it didn't do the right thing? Did you get frustrated with that situation? Well, I suppose um, I'm pro Microsoft and whenever you take on a belief system, there's always a few downsides. Yeah. Um, so most of my job is usually trying to identify those issues that frustrate customers before they get to you. Uh, though the thing is, we don't really deliver perfect software. There's no such thing as perfect software, but um, I generally help teams try to try to help improve the, the quality of their products that they're working on. Oh, incredible. And um, also, too, just for the sake of our friends around the world, um, obviously pre-virus and obviously, of course, post-virus, you're also very big in the meetup universe as well. Yeah, I've been running the Sydney Testers Meetup Group, which is a professional network for other professionals uh, like myself who are interested in learning about quality and testing practices. And I've been leading that for the last four years. Uh, I'm trying to step down at the moment because I'm starting uh, uh, doing a new studies soon, but uh, we'll see what the next adventure takes me. Yeah, now, Sam, this is really, really uh, amazing. Great having you with us. I'd love for you to share with us your ideas for making the world a better place from Sam point to, Sam's point of view. And I'd love to hear some of your ideas and what you're working on. Oh, uh, I've recently been obsessed with marketing, um, like you, Ed. <laughs> um, and uh, I've been trying to test out how I can measure my impact. Do you mind if I uh, share my screen with you, Ed? Oh, please go for it. Uh, I don't know how it works on Zoom. I'm more of a go-to webinar guy, but oh. let's do it. Host is disabled uh, screen sharing. Are you able to enable screen sharing? So I understand I need to make you the host. Is that correct? Uh, I'm not too sure. Don't worry. We're going to figure out now. And my friends around the world, don't you worry about a thing. I might not even cut this bit out because while I'm figuring, figuring this out, Sam, I want to ask you a quick question while I'm learning how to use Zoom. Yep. What have you learned in the post? What, what were one of the biggest business lessons you learned in the corona world while I figure out screen sharing? Tell us all. Oh, okay. Some of the lessons I've learned recently, uh, there's a lot more people trying to connect online and uh, with, with the reduction in, you know, meeting people in person, uh, I think a lot more people are actually open to networking and connecting uh, online. So I've been trying to, I've been testing out uh, how to engage people on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of software, fellow software testers had been redundant be, made because of the coronavirus. Uh, so I offered some career tips to help people along, uh, created a daily video series, and I've posted those videos up on LinkedIn as well and up on YouTube as well. And I love digging into the analytics and seeing how many people view these things and engage and comment. Uh, and it's been great for trying to uh, encourage that online community. And I think there's, uh, there's now a good time uh, towards practicing some online community development practices. Absolutely. And I was just going to say as well, Sam, uh, what was one of the biggest lessons you learned about posting great content that engages? Uh, so one of the lessons I've learned uh, is that uh, video content is, is king. 
Uh, but LinkedIn has a video limit of up to 10 minutes. Uh, I, and I think the general advice out there is that videos that are three to five minutes long uh, tend to get a little bit more engagement. They're easier to digest for your audience. Also, lots of people are watching videos on many different platforms, on their mobile apps or on their tablets or uh, in a whole bunch of different situations as well. So uh, if you've got that nice, short, snappy video content, uh, it's really good for engagement. Oh, very well said. Now, just so you know, I made you the host. Um, the recording and everything's transferred to you, so it's uh, really exciting. So, Sam, you own the recording and you're in full control. Please go for it. There we go. I've got the uh, screen recording now. Let's see how this will work for your uh, uh, post-production uh, launching. So I have this blog post on uh, marketing and measuring your impact. I can share the links afterwards, or you can always connect with me if you want to get this information as well. Um, and it's just how I, how I use some of the tools to help monitor engagement. I'm using WordPress and Jetpack Analytics, and I get these nice, pretty graphs that show me insights uh, around how my uh, website is going. Now, let's see if that's working. Uh, when you first launch Jetpack, uh, this is the view you'll tend to see uh, based on today's views. Uh, your best ever views and all time views. You can also see what posts are doing really well that day. Sam, just, just jumping in quickly, just for the sake of our audience. So, Jetpack is an additional program you can use as part of WordPress to analyze your website. Is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, Jetpack is a free plugin um, that's developed by the same company that developed WordPress. So, it's a WordPress developed plugin. Got it. So, this is better than Google Analytics for this application that you're talking? Uh, it's roughly the same. Um, you can integrate both WordPress and uh, Google Analytics. I've just found it easier to use uh, WordPress Jetpack because I also have the uh, Android app, uh, which gives me um, stats on at my fingertips. Um, and I can quickly show you what that looks like as well. Um, so because it's just easy to access and I can access my stats and update my blog uh, while I'm on the go. So for example, there's, uh, there's the WordPress um, app that's integrated. Uh, it's reversed, but it's, uh, it's showing the, you the same stats that I can see in this dashboard too. Wow, really powerful. I really like it. It's so clean and crisp so you can see your views your visitors um yep. your, so it's more for a blogger if you're blogging this is great software obviously yeah yeah um, um a lot of the wordpress plugins are more geared towards um uh, audience engagement and that blogging content uh but if you are using wordpress you can enable these plugins um for free if you like so i can see the where the my viewers are coming from or where they're checking in Generally, I get most of my views from Australia, but I guess in the last day, I've just had more more of my uh, UK visitors come online. Wow. So um, you've got, I suppose you on LinkedIn, you've got a great global audience. Um, you've got a very powerful, strong local audience using Meetup, and you're using your WordPress website as a means of getting that local and global influence. Yes. Um, generally, uh, my approach to LinkedIn is uh, I'm trying to drive more views of my blog. Um, so when I share content, so for example, this is one of the videos I shared in my uh, career tip series um, that's done really well. It's been uh, published in a week, uh, a week ago, and has had f nearly 5,000 views in that week. And the analytics and insights you can also access from, from LinkedIn are also really cool. So you can see uh, the demographics, uh, the locations of where your views have come from. So Sydney is my biggest uh, area of influence, but India is a close second for, for my, uh, for my. there's a huge tech scene in India. Wow, so that's really good. So in other words, your, uh, your views are outstanding, right? Obviously outstanding in terms of numbers, but I suppose you've got top companies and you've got the right people seeing your content. Mm. Yeah, that's it. I'm really resonating with my with my target audience, which is trying to help software testers at the moment. And you're obviously now doing that on a full global basis using LinkedIn technology and WordPress. Yeah, and by by having uh, by posting and sharing content on, online, I have been able to reach uh, that global audience in the industry too. Wow, that's incredible. So, so when it comes to writing a good blog, 
what are some of your tips for writing a blog that really resonates that people share and it brings you the results? Um, I would say like the structure of your blog is really important. Um, I used to just write big giant walls of text and uh, I never really bothered promoting it. Uh, but coming from a design and user experience background, I applied some of those principles to how I lay out my blog. Um, so you wanna break up lots of content. People don't have a lot of time to really deep dive and read into your content. So if you want stuff that's easy to scan, you have one or two paragraphs, you have your headings which help uh, people scan. So think about it like a newspaper. You have the above the fold, you have the headline that grabs the attention and the headlines around people will scan and dig in, dig, dig deep into something that piques their interest. Um, so you, if you think about the design principles that's used in newspapers where you've got um, a heading, um, you break up the content with both images and titles, um, that'll be really good for people who are scanning these, uh, your blog and your content um, on many different platforms as well. Wow, and um, I mean, this is great. I mean, your results speak for themselves. Uh, how do you really gauge, I mean, I know we've got total views and all that, but how do you really figure out what people want to know? Like, how do you do that on a daily basis? Figure out what content's really hitting the mark. I'm going to stop sharing my screen there. So we're going to go back yeah. to full screen. Um, uh, it's really, you can apply the same mindset you would apply for software testing. Um, generally, when you're testing something, you don't know where the issues are, but you try something, you experiment. Uh, try uh, different types of content and you just see what resonates more with your audience and measure and monitor for that too. So I didn't know that my career tip series was going to resonate a lot with people. Um, I thought it might resonate with a couple of people. I Maybe I know maybe a couple of people who've been made redundant, uh, but it's actually surprised myself with how much that type of stuff uh, resonates. If it's got that general broad appeal because nearly everyone goes through a job hunting process at some point, uh, it does resonate more than say my developing a mobile app test strategy, which is just a little bit more niche. So I get it. So in other words, you've been, so you look at your data on an obvious basis using Jetpack and LinkedIn analytics. And so you just put out different content and you just found that content that obviously relates to career. That was just sort of like the nuclear missile. That was just the little diamond that you found. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that stuff is um, resonating with people. Uh, I think, more so now, um, also because of the, the pandemic and people are really concerned about trying to keep their jobs at the moment. But I, I think it has general broad appeal as well. So I, I imagine that type of content um, is going to continue to engage and I can reuse and rehash that content in the future too. Uh, generally, when I connect with anyone on LinkedIn, I'll send them a template message saying, thanks for connecting. Here's my favorite blog post. How can I help you? And often a lot of people are asking for um, tips for job hunting. Can you review my CV and a bunch of those things. So now I have all of this content that I can easily respond with. If someone's like, oh, I got an interview with a big tech company tomorrow. Do you have any tips? And I'm like, I've got this YouTube video on interview tips. Oh, incredible. And, and on that note, um, you and I are very similar in this regard. You and I both totally took off in, during Corona. I saw you, you saw me. We've both been nailing it. What, how did you take off during Corona? What, what's, what are the ingredients of your secret sauce that helped you really thrive in Corona like we have? Uh, I think I just got bored shitless sitting at home. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, I'm so bored, rise up, I'm going to do some crazy stuff and look at how you've taken off. Yeah, I just really enjoy connecting with people and adding value and working from home for the last three months. Uh, I haven't been able to connect with any people. And I thought, how can how can I connect with people and try to add value um, and just get more content online? I had I had played enough Animal Crossing um, to survive the pandemic, so uh, I, I got that out of my system. Oh well, wow. and, and I was just going to say, um, what are your plans? Uh, in the post-corona world. Like, I know we're in a kind of a mini second wave lockdown right now. Uh, but as, as obviously, you know, uh, civilization moves on, we enter the new world. What are your plans to thrive in the post-corona civilization? Um, I, I think continuing the, the mini video series 
and uh, structuring workshop material is going to work well for me. Um, the next video series that I'd like to work on is how to give technical presentations because uh, we've all sat in a lecture or, a, uh, or an online meeting and uh, have not really connected with the with the teacher at all. They, you know, maybe speak in a monotone or they have really boring slides. <laughs> um, and uh, so I've given workshops in person before on how to give technical presentations, and I've always wanted to take that content online. Um, so I think I've got a structure for how to for, for that as my next workshop material, uh, breaking it down into small little chapters accompanied by a video that's only about five to ten minutes long as well. Um, so that's how I'm going to continue uh, iterating on what I've learned during the, the pandemic to help take this further too. Oh, pure gold. And as we bring this epic interview to its glorious conclusion, what are some of your big tips for anyone watching around the world to really win in the coming days ahead? Um, I'd say try to be online as much as possible. Uh, everyone these days is actually more open to connecting online. Uh, I think there's some people that I've spoken to in my network previously, there's this question of, do you accept all the random invites that come through on LinkedIn? Um, and certain people under certain professions uh, generally have avoided doing that. But people are more open to, to just connecting with random strangers these days too. So I would say it's uh, keep up that online engagement. Uh, if you try something and it doesn't quite work, uh, you can always try again or maybe you didn't try hard enough. Uh, don't just quit when you've just uh, experienced a small shortfall uh, because sometimes this, this marketing stuff is, is really just about persistence and, uh, and getting enough eyeballs. You might try one thing and it doesn't quite work the first time, uh, but, but don't disarray, don't get depressed if it, if it makes you feel like a failure sometimes. Oh, that's incredible. And just um, as we finish up, I just wanted to ask you, what is something personal about you that's very cool that we may not know. What's something personally unique about the powerhouse leader behind Sam Connolly? Uh, something personal about me. Um, I've ridden my motorbike with Dykes on Bikes in the Mardi Gras a few times. It's been a lot of fun. Wow. So there's a lot of things there. You, I can ride a motorbike, which I'm terrified of. Was that like yellow jumpsuit with a katana, Irma Thurman style? Oh, yeah, 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 totally. Um, uh, I'm wearing purple, so purple's my favourite colour. Uh, the last two times I've ridden in the Mardi Gras, I've ridden in the, in the purple. They're right at the end of the parade. Um, I have a sports naked bike. It's a Kawasaki ER6NL 650cc. Uh, I've done a, a track day here in Sydney. It was My mum bought it for me as a birthday present uh, recently. It was a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Post-corona, can you take me for a spin? And can I put a GoPro on my head? Totally. We, we can, oh. can organise that. Oh, that's going to be awesome, man. Um, if you wear purple, I'm going, to like, I'm going to dress up as Kylo Ren or something like that. So it'll be cool. Yeah, I don't quite have a full set of purple leathers just yet, but uh, I think it'd be fun to get a full set of purple leathers. All right, so when it's safe and legal to do so, uh, stay tuned, everyone. Um, we're gonna, you know how you get the helmet, you stick, I'm going to do the GoPro yeah. thing in my head, you know that little alien thing? I want to do that. I've always wanted to do it. Now, just to let you know, I'm, I'm very chicken. I'm a bit of a, I'm a big chicken, so you're going to have to go easy on me. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. We won't be uh, taking, you know, those corners really, really fast. Yeah, that's a pleasure. And just quickly as well, um, how can people find your blog and get in contact with you, Sam? Yep. So my website is bughuntersam.com. Uh, I use that alias all online, also on Twitter. So Twitter at bughuntersam. Uh, just remember the my name's Sam and I like to find bugs in software. Uh, Sam, it's an absolute honour. I want to give you the final word. What is your big closing thought to wrap up this outstanding interview? Uh, my big closing thought is um, try to keep your hopes up. It's it's we're working in a really depressing and a really stressful time these days um, and don't give your hopes up too too quickly uh, I've personally had struggles with with my mental health and I've had to try and keep on top of that over the last three or four months uh, we've never really operated in this type of period before so if something's causing you stress uh, please take note of it and please be kind um, to yourselves as well try not to stress yourselves out too much